campaign, I'm going to do something slightly unusual. Um, this is sort of a list review, but it's also sort of a tutorial. Um, a lot of people have uh, written to me over the, 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 the time that I've been doing these videos about how to make Germans more competitive. And it's one of the, the hurdles that really have not really worked out for me yet. Um, I've yet to see German lists win major tournaments, um, but I have seen German lists do well. And especially in the hands of some experienced players that know what they're doing and that don't fall into traps of purchasing... Um, um, you know, with Germany, you can buy so much stuff and there's not a lot of it where it's really worth it points for value. Um, so if you don't fall into that trap, but if you very deliberately uh, you buy the stuff that you really need because you really need it and because you have a plan, then you can do stuff. So, and uh, quite recently, um, Alistair Unicom uh, won the Northern Lights mini tournament. It was sort of a prep tournament for, for other tournaments, maybe the WTC and maybe, you know, <coughs> they're going to the um, the Welsh Open as well. And some of them are coming to Denmark for the Danish Open. So I guess it's a bit of a mix of, of just training for competitive tournaments over this spring. And Alistair actually uh, sent me his list and and uh, gave me permission to talk about it. So that, that is what I'm doing here. So this is a sort of tutorial about what goes on when you're making a list uh, for a competitive tournament, how to do it with Germans, and at the same time it's a list review. Um, so I think I should talk you through the list first and then talk about why the different elements are there and why they've been chosen as they have. Um, so, it's a 15 order dice list, um, and, and we can make a first stop there. I'm being sidetracked nonstop. 15 order dice is a good place to be at a thousand points um, uh, list. Um, it means that your units, it's not a horde list, your units are still pretty capable, but you will get the dice when you think you need them. Um, most of the time. So 15 order dice. I would say between 13 and 15 is a golden spot um, for me, at least for a thousand points, um, unless you're going all hoard. Um, if you go below that, then you're putting too many points into too few units, in my opinion, which means that you will not uh, get the dice when you need them, and you will have very limited units to actually have an effect on the opponent. There won't be as many shots coming out of you simply. Um, so, so yeah, I think 15 order dice is, is like a, a thing you should aim for. And Alistair has done this very, very well. It's a, a, a generic German reinforced platoon, which is, again, something that you see in most tournaments. Uh, WTC have, is using generic armies of only platoons. Uh, the G Danish Nationals is using generic platoons, uh, a lot of the national tournaments, uh, because it, it's pretty close to the competitive format that Warlord Games is putting out there. It is also, in many people's opinion, including my own, where you find the most balance um, with generic platoons. They, they are pretty balanced, um, and... Uh, you can always debate whether or not you should allow multi-platooning, like having two or three platoons or not. Um, when you do that, it becomes a little bit more unbalanced, but at the same time, you sort of you allow for different things, different combos, um, more liberty in, in the actual composition of the lists. Um, so there's a bit more to play with if you're a list builder um, in multi-platoons. Um, this one is a single platoon, and he starts out with a first lieutenant, who, because he's German, is regular, and he has an extra dude. Um, Alistair has most likely equipped these with, with assault rifles. Why does he do this? Well, because they're free for the officer and his helper. Uh, you might even consider getting two helpers, 
yes, they won't be a small team anymore. And he, he's kept them at two people because he wants them to, to be a small team. But with assault rifles, they have two shots at 18 inches. That's a good range, and that is a lot of shots coming out. So they are effective for very, very few points. That is why he has an extra man here. And I think it's worth considering when you're already paying for a regular lieutenant that you might as well get the extra man. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I said it was a second lieutenant, didn't I? It's a first lieutenant. So Alistair here is, uh, is also boosting him to first lieutenant. Why? Well, because he's playing around with and getting better at using the snap to action. Uh, Germans have that extra snap too, and with the first lieutenant, you can really snap a lot of units uh, in your vicinity uh, out. Alistair himself wrote to me that he there, there are certain units that he wants to stay close to uh, the first lieutenant. I don't think I'll hint who which ones they are, but but there are certain units here which might make a really good counter push if Alistair gets attacked. Uh, he, he has units that he can snap to in a single counter push where uh, three units move at the same time and, and dark her down uh, stuff. He'll even be able to use the lieutenant, put a few pins on a unit, throw something else against the unit and, and kill it uh, or, or double pin it. Um, so a good idea. And if you can make that work, it really is a good idea. It's more difficult, it's more finicky somehow. It, it requires a lot of training to be able to get snapped to, to work decently. Um, I haven't got that skill, but you can have it. So, so, so that, I, I think, is what Alistair is playing with here. Then he has his infantry, which is a hair. The first one is a hair veteran a grenadier squad. Um, they have two Panzerfausts and four assault rifles and two men with regular rifles. Now, the clever bit here, and the thing that I think that most uh, players of Germany should learn. Yes, assault rifles are good, but when you put that many in a unit, they become very, very expensive. So um, you should try and limit that to units where you know that you'll use it. Alistair has done that. He's put all his assault rifles into one unit and he's being clever about it because when you're facing snipers, that sniper will, will try to hunt down something special in the unit, something that's scary, right? But in this unit, the two rifle dudes that are the most unscary dudes in the unit, they will be carrying the Panzerfausts. So as a sniper, what are you going to shoot at? Are you going to take out one of the assault rifles? Or are you going to take out one of the Panzerfausts? It really depends. And because there are two Panzerfausts, uh, you can't, as a sniper, simply take out the Panzerfaust and then the unit is neutralized. It will still be a threat, even though it's been hit once with a, uh, uh, by a sniper and, and has one guy killed, it will still be a threat. It's veteran as well, which means that one hit from a sniper will most likely not kill the Panzerfaust. So it's really survivable. It's a real threat for assault rifles. You have tough fighter. It's a real threat threat in close combat. It's a real threat in uh, in shooting uh, because it's a lot of shots coming out, and it's a threat to vehicles as well, tanks. Um, so sort of a Death Star unit here. Something that Alistair can push forward, especially if he has some cover. He can push up, and he can start taking fire into the unit and still survive. Um, six men is also where the, the unit has some heft to it, so so he can take a few casualties. One thing that I would note is um, there are no obvious casualty choices to take out from this unit, right? When Alistair it, it loses like one or two dudes in this unit, he is going to have a difficult choice. Does he take off the riflemen or does he take off the assault rifles? So you could actually argue that, that the Panzerfaust should go on the assault rifles, but I don't think they... Uh, there are other reasons why you wouldn't do that, right? 
especially if if you can go up and split fire because the the uh, Panzerfausts can go off in one direction shooting a vehicle whereas all the assault rifles can go in the other direction so i think they should go on the but but there is an argument here for uh, having like one dude with a rifle that you can pretty easily just take off as a casualty a very nice unit right and it costs Cost 108 points, so it is expensive, but it is also a unit that can survive and that can deal out damage. <clears throat> His other veteran unit, again, sort of a Death Star unit, 117 points, veteran Storm Pioneers. Um, again, Storm Pioneers is a really good unit, but they are very expensive, so you use them. Again, as sort of a Death Star unit, you can you can fling them up, especially if you're doing counterattacks where the enemy has already pushed up, maybe suffered a few casualties, may, maybe gotten some pins. Then you can throw these uh, pioneers up, as the same with the veteran uh, grenadiers. You can throw them up, and you can counterpunch really well. <laughs> um, maybe not it's maybe not the best uh, units to go on the offensive. To start with, but as a counterpunch unit, they're really good. He has again six men in the unit. You could have gotten that down to five, but I think Alistair here wants to make sure that he has some survivability, some extra men, he can suffer casualties and still be effective. Again, he has two rifles. I'm guessing that they all carry the Panzerfausts, although maybe not. Because one of those rifles will be a uh, loader for the flamethrower, which he also has. And then he has three submachine guns. The submachine guns here, why not the uh, assault rifles? Well, because most likely he's going to go into six inches <laughs> range, which means that the submachine guns will be at point blank um, and, and uh, below half range. So he'll, he'll most likely be very close to the enemy at, at, anyways. So there's no reason to go for that extra 18 inches. That would just be too expensive. Again, he is considering points for value. What am I going to use this unit for? Where are they going to fight? Um, and he's buying exactly the gear that they need to fight at that range. So, and again, we have a unit that can that can threaten two things at once. If it's thrown up in a heavy field car and, and then gets out, it can Panzerfaust um, a tank to one side and then flamethrower and SMG and infantry unit to the other. Um, really effective use of uh, units. And it's one of the things that I think you'll find, maybe especially with players who's... who's on the competitive level, um, and maybe players who've been to the WTC or gone to competitive tournaments, you'll find this um, idea that you can threaten multiple things very, very alluring to most of them. Um, so that is also one of the things that I think you should think about when you're doing like competitive Germans. Then he has two uh, Herr Kanadier units, um, and both of them are eight men. One of them has two Panzerfaust, the other has one Panzerfaust. They all have rifles. They're all regular. They are his backline holders. They are going to be on ambush. They're going to threaten enemy tanks away, but they're not actually going to go hunt stuff. So again, he's thinking about what he wants his units to do. He has a plan already when he's list building, even though he hasn't even seen the scenarios. He's not seen any opponents. He knows that he wants these units to be on the defensive. He wants those units to be counterpunch units. Now let's look at what he has to attack with, and we should look at his uh, support weapons. He has a heavy mortar team with a spotter. That is a real threat. I don't think most people would want to stay still with a heavy mortar shooting in on them. Um, it's, it really can mess up uh, units. He has a veteran sniper team. Again, they're very, very survivable. The veterans are very survivable. And he does this because if he's going to go up into a sniper duel, which is quite often what you'll see if both sides are bringing snipers, right? One sniper will shoot at the other sniper and they'll, like, until one of them dies, right? But he, because he's a veteran, he's got an edge in that duel um, against regular uh, snipers. He's got a veteran frame for as well. Again, he's trying to make that survivable. Everything in this unit tries to be as survivable as possible, at the same time as it tries to be as cost-efficient as possible. 
um, so the the heavy mortar and the um, and he also brings a nibberwerfer. Those two are his offensive weapons. They are there to ensure that the enemy moves at some point, that the enemy attacks, because when the enemy attacks, he can be on ambush and he can counterpunch. That is what he wants to do with this list. The Nibberwerfer will definitely ensure that the enemy moves out, because nobody wants to stay there and just be shot at by a Nibberwerfer. Um, and it will also ensure that he spreads out, which again is good for a counterpunch army, you want the enemy to spread out because then he can't attack you all at once, most likely. It'll be difficult for him to, to like focus all his forces at one point. 